about halfway through our camper vanning in Scotland adventure. What do you think about it, Dad? I know I say this about almost every trip we go on, but this has really been one of my favourites. I wasn't expecting to love it so much. Absolutely breathtaking. The scenery, the villages, the culture, completely charming. I guess I feel a little bit of a connection to the place. Doing it by camper van was an absolutely great decision. What about you? Are you enjoying as much as I am? Maybe not quite as much as you are, but yeah, it's been absolutely spectacular. I think I had a lot of questions like if you did wild camp in Scotland, if it was legal, where can you dump your toilet, how we're going to stay warm, how much it even cost. I think in this trip we've been able to answer a lot of questions. So hopefully as well as taking you guys along on our trip, we'll be able to answer a lot of those questions that we had before we started. Swap the warm, sunny Mediterranean for gloomy Scotland before we embark on our Van Life Scotland trip. We've stopped in Edinburgh first. We'll pick up the van here in a couple of days. As soon as we arrive, we're already sick. Probably didn't help that we stopped in London for a wedding on the way. Hopefully, we're feeling good uh, in a couple of days and ready to get going. We're trying to get as much work done before we set out on the trip, but we still get a chance to explore Edinburgh. The first castle of Mini and also an ice cream truck, which I cannot for the life of me figure out why people want to eat ice cream here, but there's always a line. The weather is proving to be very Scottish and dreary. One of my favourite bits of Edinburgh so far is this amazing little cemetery just under the Edinburgh Castle. There's so many cool places to actually view the castle from. So right now we're at the Nell's viewpoint. On Thursday afternoon, we travel from Edinburgh to nearby the airport, where a lot of the Scottish van rentals operate from. So we just got here just to pick up our van. You can see behind me there are tons of vans and you have to wait in line because there's other people trying to get their van. It's a new whip for the next two weeks. Home sweet home. With only 14 days up our sleeve, we've designed an itinerary that will take in some of Scotland's greatest hits, such as the Cungorms National Park, Inverness, Loch Ness, the Isle of Skye, the Argyll Coast, Loch Lomond and Glasgow, before returning here. We set off toward the Cungorms National Park. Where have we just been? Little Donk. Where are we going? Big Donk. <laughs> little, little Dunkle and Big Dunkle. First little Scottish town we've come across and I'm very impressed. However, we don't even make it halfway as we're enchanted by the town of Dunkel and decide to stop here for the night. After a quick visit to the local inn, we head back to the van so Kelly can catch up on work and I can set up the van for the trip. First night in the van. Trying to figure everything out. Everything works, everything's neat, everything's tidy. Flushing toilet, cookers, fridge. Very comfortable little home. Is there solar? No, all charged by driving and plugging it in. But what good would solar be in Scotland? That's very true. We need a wind generator. Thank you. How was it? It's pretty good to be able to poop in your own toilet. You like the cassette toilet? Well, yeah, I guess so. It's better than having to wake up and running around frantically trying to find a toilet because you don't have one because we haven't ever had a toilet in our van. We'll see how much you like it when you get to empty it a little bit further down the road. No, 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 that'll be you. First one to deal it. First one to what now? First one who dealt it has to... Smelt it. You got it. Interesting about Scotland is that there's so many different road trips you can go on and you just really have to pick one. So you really just gotta to go to it and be flexible. So last night we were headed up to the Cairngorms National Park, but we ran across this really cute little town, Dunkled. So we stopped and it was absolutely beautiful. We kept right by the water. And now we are gonna go hiking this morning. Make sure you properly budget for fuel because fuel is expensive in Scotland. I think we just paid 105 Great British Pounds. We just had to make a pit stop in Pit Lockery because I didn't bring a raincoat. A little parka may or may not do the trick, but it'll at least be better than absolutely nothing. Bring a raincoat to Scotland. It's 
swivel seats are the absolute best thing about this thing, I think. We didn't have them in our van in Mexico and I really wanted them, but I'm loving the swivel seat. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour. A table, you got two extra seats if you're gonna bring friends along with you. They've got seat belts. Each of the windows has a covering. It also has bug screen protector, um, energy efficient lighting, heaps and heaps of storage like there's so much storage two sunroof lights it keeps it quite light in here all your kitchen stuff is included everything you need for like a basic setup for four make sure you actually check your kitchen equipment to make sure it works we turned up with out the most important fit for this this guy so no coffee this morning so you've got an energy efficient fridge this is the most important bit probably this is where you monitor all your electronics your water so you've got one house battery, which runs your lights and your fridge. You've got one starter battery, obviously for your car. Your water pump. And over here, this is for your heater. So the van actually comes equipped with a heater, which is nice in this Scottish fall. So in the back, we only have it set up for one bed, which is plenty of room to lay down in. Ugh, I'm quite short though. But you can actually make it into two. So you can put one bed up on this railing and then have one bed here and then another bed a bit lower so that all four people don't have to sleep in this one little bed, which would be a little bit uncomfortable. And the best bit of all, which we've never had in any of our three vans, ta -da, is a toilet. And it is supreme. No more pee bottles in the middle of the night. I've got an actual toilet. That's it. Oh, it's also a shower, but we haven't used the shower yet. Is it a hot water shower? Ooh, can't wait for that after my next hike. That's it, it's the van. Pro tip about hiking here in Scotland, know where you wanna go before you get there. We're really failing miserably. We tried to go to one walk, but it was a bit too muddy and then we got a bit lost. So now we're gonna try to do a different walk, the Bruja Waterfalls. Hopefully this won't be too muddy and the rain has seemed to stop. Our road trip route takes us around the edges of the Gorms, Scotland's biggest national park. Along the way, there are lots of towns and villages, each of which seems to have access to a few walks of varying lengths and difficulties. driving this big bad beast. Yeah, it's actually really good to drive. It's big, but it's got nice mirrors, so you can see it's got a reversing sensor when they get too close to things. It's generally responsive, not the pick up. I'm enjoying it. We're heading north toward Aviemore, another town on the edge of the Carngorms, which will make a great base to set off from tomorrow where we plan to drive to Glenmore Forest to find some more walks. Last night we stayed in this cute little town, Aviemore. It's a great little base for getting out and exploring some of the nearby hikes and walks in the Karen Gorm National Park. We're on one right now. Luckily we've got a bit of good weather. Hopefully it stays. We made it about halfway up, maybe a third of the way up. We have started to turn a bit. It's all greyed out at the top, so head back down, I think. Retreating from the Hill of the Shepherd, we head for one of the more protected walks at the foot of the hills. We're headed for the Green Locket, supposedly where the fairies come to bay. We're wearing the lucky colour green to boost our chances of spotting some. Unfortunately, we don't spot any fairies. But we do see a couple of ducks. Wanted to talk quickly about choosing a 
camper van to rent in Scotland. So if you're coming here without your own camper van, there are a lot of companies renting out vans. We had no idea before we came, but it's a big deal here. So choosing a rental company to work with can be a little bit overwhelming. To make it a little bit easier, you wanna decide what kind of van you want. So choosing between a large motorhome, which has more space, but um, will be more difficult on some of the remote journeys, which have quite narrow roads like the NC500, or a camper van, which is easy to maneuver, but you've got less space. Um, that's probably the first distinction you wanna make. Then depending on what season you're here in, if you're here in the cold, you probably need something with a heater on board and maybe one that's not a pop top necessarily. And the third thing you wanna think about is what type of trip you're doing. So if you're doing lots of wild camping and you need an onboard toilet, um, maybe an onboard shower. But if you plan to make use of all the awesome campsites that are literally all over the country and you'll be staying mostly in those and you can get away with a van that doesn't have facilities on board. So once you've decided on your van, that's when you should start looking for a company. We've got to list some of the top Scottish rental companies in the description below. Have a look at those. If you need any help selecting a camper van or a camper van rental company, let us know in the comments and we'll try to help. Just got supplies at the Tesco and now we're going to drive from Aviemore to Inverness. We're going to spend the night. Find a pub to watch the rugby. But first, there's business to attend to. We need to empty the loo for the first time. We're pretty impressed with our cassette toilet and decide it would be a worthy addition to our next van. While the loo impresses, the grey water tank doesn't, as it appears to be blocked. We finally wrestle the emergency hatch off, only to find there's no blockage and that we must have had the tap open the whole time. That's a bit of a blunder. How was that experience? Uh, yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, that was bad. That sucked. But it's all good because we're almost in Vanessa. There's a couple of gyms that offer free free trial memberships, so we're gonna um, go get a shower in Vanessa and be right as right. Spend the evening camped in the train station car park in Inverness and explore the town the next day. Before setting off in the afternoon for Loch Ness. We made it to Loch Ness. It's an absolutely beautiful lake. Our lake here is a loch. I didn't know that. We're stopping off at Drumna Drocket, a town that has fully embraced the mystery of the lake's famous monster. Next, we're taking a short detour to see the Falls of Divac. Before continuing along the loch, Stopped right above our Great Castle, which is one of the castles along Loch Ness. Wild camp anywhere throughout Scotland, as long as you're respectable. Um, and what do you mean respectable? Like dress nicely? As long as you respect the land. Don't leave your shit tickets everywhere. But along Loch Ness, there's all these laybys where you can park and stay for the night. You get a little bit of road traffic, but that should die off. You might be able to spot the Loch Ness monster. We're not staying, however, and our next stop is Invermorriston. The country roads in Scotland are narrow and many a single carriageway. It's important that you feel comfortable reversing your van or motorhome accurately for at least a couple of hundred metres. I've taken us down a dead end road. This is especially true in the busy season along popular routes like Sky and the NC500. We eventually make it to Invermorriston. This is absolutely spectacular. Famous for its stone bridges, although it's perhaps the colours that are most impressive at this time of year. My favourite spot along Loch Ness. It's absolutely beautiful. We thought we'd make it from Inverness to the Isle of Skye, but there's just so much to see along Loch Ness. It's just absolutely stunning. Sunset, we make it to Fort Augustus. Seriously, windy here. I feel like I'm going to be blown over. We're going to be sailing in this, huh? 
After exploring the village, we head on down the road to find a campsite for the night. Doing a bit of cooking in the van. A little bit challenging. This was my cutting knife. You normally have a whole lot of space to work with, but we're making chili tonight, which is relatively easy outside of the cutting. Let's see how it goes. There's some absolutely beautiful little um, wild camping spots right by these locks. So we're right now at Lock Gary. There's nobody here this morning, it's stunning. After working for a couple of hours, we set off once again, stopping for one more look over Loch Gowrie before the drive to the Isle of Skye. Continuing on towards Skye, we spent the morning working, which we unfortunately have to do while we're in Scotland. It was pretty easy. It looks like the, the 4G coverage of the whole of Scotland is really good. Just from your cell phone as well. So yeah. we picked up a SIM card at the airport and 30 great British pounds provides you with 100 gigabytes of data. I think we could probably work throughout the whole of Scotland um, and wild camp if it weren't for the fact that there's no inverter in this van so we need to go and charge our computers from time to time. But in terms of coverage, everywhere we want to go, at least around the, the towns and the main roads. Have yeah. service. Before we reach Sky, we get a look at one of Scotland's most famous and picturesque sites, the Aileen Donnan Castle. Finally, sunglasses. We're crossing the bridge over into Sky, where we'll spend the next couple of days. Beautiful weather right now. They said it might clear up on the western side of the island, and it has. And it's, yeah, pretty breathtaking. We've arrived at Portree, Skye's biggest town, but it's pretty quiet at this time of year. After a quick look around, we're heading out of town toward a nearby campsite. Ready for eggs? Ready for eggs. First night in one of the campgrounds here on the Isle of Skye. Beautiful setting, absolutely stunning behind me. It's got all the amenities you could want. Toilet, showers, there's a place to do your dishes, there's laundry, electricity. Only 25 Great British Pounds for us for the night, but I believe it's probably increased when you're in the middle of the high season. We're coming literally at the tail end. The campgrounds are usually only open from April until October, and so that means that tomorrow is closing day. We're headed for one of Sky's most famous attractions. Hiking up to see the old man of store. Windy, very windy, and lots of people here even in late October. The hike up is about one mile. It's quite a steep incline. The wind is blowing right at you. doing the right side loop of the Isle of Skye road trip it will take you six, seven hours because there's just so many beautiful spots to stop off of. A lot of the roads on Skye are single carriage, so you need to stay alert and pull over in passing places to let other people get by. In the busy season, driving a large motorhome could be pretty stressful. We've reached Duntelm Castle at the northernmost point of Skye.
when we're booking this trip, I was a little bit worried that we'd maybe done it too late in the year, but late October now, almost November. But it, it's turned out to be really, really nice. It's been absolutely amazing. I think the best part about it for me is the changing of the, the lease. The second thing would be that there's quite a year crowd. Another night, another wild camp, huh? Another wild camp. We woke up really early this morning, well before sun up. In fact, the sun's still not up. It's really cold overnight, but um, we got out of bed, we turned on the heater, which is something you really need here, I feel like, uh, toward the end of October. And we're gonna make an early start today. We thought we'd get further around Sky yesterday, but we probably underestimated how uh, big it was and how many things there were to see along the way. So we're gonna take an extra day today um, so it's probably good that we're going to make an early start. We've just finished breakfast, going to wash up, and we should be able to hit the road just around sunup. We're ready to get going. For the next town, we're going to have to pull in, charge the computers at some um, cafe. cafe. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. She always knows. It's shaping up to be a wet and windy day. But we soon find some great comfort food and some power points at the excellent Cafe Kill. Downsides of travelling in fall are it's wet and it's cold. It's rained every day except one that we've been here so far. In general it's fine experiencing Scotland in the in the grey and, and a bit of rain I think is probably the way it's supposed to be done but Days like today, when we can't get out of the car to see anything you want to see, it's a bit annoying. But on the whole, probably a fair, a fair trade. The other downside about traveling at this time of year, at the end of October, start of November, is a lot of things start to shut up shop, especially after the 1st of November. So a lot of caravan parks and cafes and businesses along the way uh, are, sh are shutting up for the season. So if you're wanting to see all of that stuff, then coming a little bit earlier might be a good idea. On a day like today, there's no point fighting the weather, so we duck into a wee inn. But after warming ourselves by the fire, it's time to hit the road again. Originally, we had wanted to take the ferry from Armadale to the mainland, but unfortunately, when we went to book the ferries, it was fully booked. And then when we tried to book a campsite, it was also fully booked because there's only one campsite that's open during the month of November. There's only five spots. So if you're coming to Scotland during the month of November, probably wise to plan ahead or you might miss out and take the long route like we have back to Fort Williams. In just two days, we've gone from fall to winter. There are no more leaves on the ground, on the trees, and there's actually snow on the mountain in front of me. We drove past these mountains just the other day. It was a totally different landscape. up for the night in the shadow of Ben Nevis, which is Scotland's highest mountain. One of the questions we had before we came was, are we going to be able to wild camp or will we be restricted to campsites or God forbid caravan parks the whole trip? And we've been really awesomely surprised in how easy and prevalent really nice wild camps are all over Scotland. We've been able to wild camp um, almost every night of our trip so far and the wild camps have all been awesome. And then on the other side of the coin, if you do prefer to stay in a caravan park or a campsite with a few more amenities like Wi-Fi, like 
flushing toilets like uh, electricity, those are also everywhere in Scotland, generally charging from about 25 to 40 pound a night. But for our money, um, when you can park somewhere like this every night, it's uh, an easy decision and this is an absolute beauty. And of course, the only appropriate thing to do when parked nearby a local inn is to support the economy. We hiked up in Nevis this morning and I'm gonna bust my little behind trying to talk and walk. We actually didn't think we were gonna do it because we read online that it was really difficult and challenging, but we had a bit of good weather, so took our shot. And we're so glad we did. It was absolutely stunning. It was beautiful. The path is really well maintained. There was even some kids who were hiking it and we're hiking it in our tennis shoes. So totally doable, definitely worth it if you're doing the Argyle Coast route. Absolutely stunning. Recommend 10 out of 10. Next fan we're having is definitely gonna have a shower. That was pretty amazing. Heated right up, got everything a bit wet, but wow, what an experience. First shower in a van. Ooh, it's cold though. We ran the gas pretty hard yesterday. We got off the mountain and we were really cold and Kelly wanted to shower. So we had the water boiler and the, and the heater running pretty much from mid Arvo until we ran out of gas in the evening. Which meant no gas overnight last night and no gas this morning to eat or to cook with. So it's an early morning run to the, the gas man. Hopefully they're open. Um, but yeah, be a bit careful in October in Scotland or in November in Scotland now with your gas because if you run it all day, then you won't have any in the morning. And it will suck. So, a helpful tip, if you're traveling in Scotland and you need gas, you should be aware that there is a gas cartel known as Calor running the show here. And if you're unlucky enough to find yourself saddled with flow gas canisters, there's every chance you'll be run out of town. We've just been to three gas dispensers and each one of them looked looked at me like I'm contagious or something when I mentioned flows. Get out! What's up? Um, so there are flow dispensers but they're not in every town and we're not going to be able to get gas uh, until we get to a few towns away. So if you do have flow canisters just prepare ahead and research where you can fill or swap those specific brands. It's not like other countries where you can just fill a gas bottle or swap any old bottle. Serious business, as we found out this morning on this cold Scottish morning. Our spirits are not dampened because today we're heading for what could potentially be the most beautiful part of our journey. And that's saying something. The Glencoe region is famous for its incredible scenery so much so that it has been the setting for a variety of film and television, including James Bond and Highlander. We 
driving along the A82 and it's probably the prettiest drive that we've been on this whole entire trip. It's absolutely stunning. The passage between Linco, where they filmed James Bond, and Glasgow, just something out of this world. Lots of people, even though we're in low season, there's really not even anywhere to park, so it'd be really difficult, I think, to come during high season. The road to Glenative has been made famous by James Bond Skyfall, and it does not disappoint. We return back down the valley the same way we came up. It's on to Oban to see if we can track down the gas that's been eluding us thus far. This area around Lake Cove today has just been, I mean, I say it every day, but this is going to be some of the most beautiful driving in the whole of Scotland. The sun is really coming out. <laughs> A little bit of a success today. We managed to find gas. It took us only about a two hour drive to get to Oban, but stop, stoppage. But right by the Oban airport, you can get your flow gas bottle refilled. I think I got my hopes up too soon. Ed's come back empty handed. So the gas situation is now getting pretty dire. We just went to the fourth place for the day. This time, right company, but those six kilo gas bottles. 45 minutes before the end of the week, so 4.15 on a Friday afternoon. If we can't find gas in the next hour, it's gonna be a very cold, very hungry weekend. Absolutely crazy, the system in Scotland. You can't refill a bottle, you can't swap a bottle, it's not the right company. Uh, it's a bit mad. So we struck out, no gas tonight. It'll be another cold night overnight. We may have found a place where we can find some tomorrow. So hopefully we'll have gas for the rest of the trip. Lesson learned about just how difficult it is to find the right gas, especially if you have flow gas like us um, when driving Scotland. Thankfully in Scotland, you're never too far from a pub with a hearty meal. How'd you sleep? Pretty good. But it was a cold, cold night, and now we don't have any heat this morning, so we've got to go to a cafe to get some warmth and coffee and breakfast. What's the view like behind you? Oh, it looks like a car park. Oban. Not to be confused with Oban. Oban. What you little Oban? It's the worst Scottish accent I've ever heard. Is it? Oh man, I was really working on that. I. After warming up with a coffee, we take a look around Oban. The unofficial capital of the West Highlands is also the gateway to the Isles of Mull and Carrera. It's also a great place to sample Scottish seafood. The Green Shed is famous for its fresh mussels and the biggest oysters we've ever seen for just a buck fifty. We're leaving the coast behind us, driving toward Loch Orr, and hopefully we'll be collecting gas along the way. Success. We're celebrating our win on gas by wild camping, cranking up the heater and firing up the grill. It's Sunday and we still have some Scottish experiences to tick off the list. The next one is a fresh scone and we've heard the ones at Ocho in Inveray are pretty good, either with a tea, a coffee or a Bloody Mary. After our snack, it's time for a brisk walk up to the Dunna Quaish Watchtower for views over Loch Fine. Before a trip
trip out to the Fine Owls Brewery Tap and Shop for a couple of games to round out a fantastic weekend. We still have it set to film, obviously. No, no, I'll fix it. Ooh. Changing your belt, tying your belt. Taking acid, <laughs> taking more acid, settle down. <laughs> Don't switch it then. Flip it up. Sorry, why, right? Don't even let me play the game. We're coming up to our final few days in Scotland, but we still have some fantastic places to explore, including Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park. Today, we're walking up Ben Dub near the town of Luss. One of the questions we had before we started our road trip was, how long do we need for a camper vanning trip in Scotland? Having been here about three weeks, it feels like we could have spent literally forever exploring every single hike and stopping in at every single charming inn in every wee village. But there's lots of road trips you can do in just a few days. If you came from other parts of the UK uh, and you've only got a long weekend, then there's short ones like the Argyll Coastal Route or um, the Perth Route that you can do you know, in, in just two or three days. If you've got a week, you can probably visit a lot of the really nice highlights Scotland has to offer. If you've got two or more weeks, well, then you can probably get out to some of the more remote places like the NC500 and the Isles of Mull and the Isles of Skye. So yeah, as long as you've got, it's really the answer to how long you need for a camper bounty trip in Scotland. It's our last day in the Scottish countryside and our last day for a ramble. We're heading up Connock Hill on the other side of Loch Lomond and the weather is perfect. But we still have to squeeze in a couple more Scottish experiences. How is it? Yeah, it tastes like creaming soda. I thought it was going to be orange, but... Yummy? It's like creaming soda. We're stopping tonight at the West Highland Campsite and Hotel, one of the most highly rated campsites in Scotland, run for a good cause. We just made it to Glasgow. Last night we spent the night at the West Highland Campsite. Absolutely lovely campground. It is actually a nonprofit where the travelers can stay and then they use the funds to help van lifers who are down on their luck. Um, so highly recommend checking it out. Great facilities, showers, free breakfast, which I've never seen at a campground before, which is quite nice. Wi-Fi, everything's included with your with your stay. We had a nice night out in Glasgow last night. We sampled some of Scotland's finest delicacies, like haggis, not as bad as I thought it might have been. So our last day today, we're driving the car to drop it off in Edinburgh. I thought we'd reflect a little bit on how much we spent doing this. If you don't have your own van, you're going to spend between maybe 50 euros for the cheapest, smallest van in low season through to about 150, 200 euros even for a big old modern motorhome in the, the top of high season, that's per night. Campsites and accommodation, but you can probably free camp the whole time you're here just using the campsite facilities to dump your loo and your grey water which costs about $5 every two or three days. Or you can use the campsites, which will cost maybe 25 to 40 pounds a night. Food and drink is pretty expensive here, but it's not eye-wateringly expensive. So a meal out at a pub, probably 15 to 20 pounds. And ale costs about between five, six, maybe even seven pounds in the city. If you're shopping for groceries, we were spending about 100 pounds on groceries for two people for a week. One of our biggest expenses was filling up. At the time of recording, we were spending £1.63 per litre. Then incidental costs will be tours and activities if you're doing those sorts of things. If you want to see the insides of castles, we didn't do that too much. We would either see the outsides and um, hike up mountains, which is pretty much free. Uh, except for parking. Parking's a bit of a killer here. So every time you park in a public car park, they're going to get you for anywhere between £2.50 and maybe £10, depending on where you are. We personally spent about £800 or about 1000 USD per week. £400 of that was because we had to rent a camper van here 
and the other 400 pounds was living expenses. So about 100 pounds on groceries, another 100 to 150 pounds maybe on eating out, and the rest on campsites, laundry, bits and pieces. So it's affordable, but it's not exactly the cheapest place to, to do van life. If you have your own van and you come and you wild camp and you cook for yourself and you use the grocery shops, then you can do it pretty cheaply. So that's a wrap on our camper van in Scotland trip. We hope you've enjoyed it and we hope we've been able to answer a lot of your questions. But if we haven't, just leave a comment below and we'll make sure to answer it. And we'll also have a detailed blog article on van life in Scotland. Thanks for coming along. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Definitely taking acid.